like me. So they go, move. Hey, move over. Out here in middle America, corn is king. And we use it for tons of stuff. Uh, cosmetics, latex paints, ethanol, uh, crayons, disposable diapers, uh, aspirin, uh, shoe polish. I, I, I can't name everything. Can, can we run a call here? Thanks. Corn is an all-American plant, and we've grown it since day one. But did corn always look like this? No. A few thousand years ago, you wouldn't even recognize it. Uh, and you're a corn if you could call it that, was about the size of my thumb. So how did it come to look like this? It's a genetic detective story. And here's the guy who tracked down the answer. Hi, I'm John Dobley. I'm a genetics researcher at the University of Wisconsin, and I study the history of maize, what you call corn. Using genomic techniques, John tracked corn's genetic clues to a grass-like plant from Mexico called teosinte which means grain of the gods. Supposedly corn's great, 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 great grandparents. Did ancient Native Americans really create the corn we know and love? I mean, come on, this is Teosinte, and this does not look like an ear of corn. We've gone from something that had only eight or 12 kernels in its ear to corn in modern times, which can have over 500 kernels in its ear. Now, there's nothing better than sinking your teeth into those sweet, soft kernels of corn. But Teosinte's kernels are covered in cases as hard as rocks. What caused the change? By crossing Teosinte with corn, John was able to compare the genomes of the two plants, and he found his answer. This plant has in it one gene that we've brought in from Teosinte that affects the structure of the ear. And if we pull off the husk, and it shows you the dramatic effect that a single gene can have on the appearance of the plant. Thanks to one gene, Teosinte's ears were turned inside out. Its hard outer cases became corn's inner cob, ah. with the kernels now on the outside. So basically, by selecting and breeding only for the things they wanted, the Native Americans turned a grass into corn but it took hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. By understanding the genome, we could improve corn even more, maybe make it drought resistant or more nutritious, and it would take just a few years instead of a thousand. We'd be doing the same thing the ancients did, only more efficiently and precisely, because we'd know which of corn's 50,000 genes control the qualities we want. And the way to find out what a specific gene does? You knock it out, turn it on, turn it off, and see what happens. You create a mutant. Somewhere in this cornfield, there are mutants. Maybe a whole army of mutants. And inside their tall, leafy plant bodies are the mutant genes that make them look weird. And we will find them. Oh yes, we will. We're in Berkeley, California, where driven, dedicated scientists are making mutants. The director of the Plant Gene Expression Center at Berkeley is Sarah Haig, who some call the corn lady. I like the leaves, the tassel, the ear. I study the stem. I study the way it grows and the way it reproduces. I also dance like a corn dog. <laughs> Hit it! Do the corn dog dance. Out here we have mutants waiting to be found, waiting to be discovered. So what we have here is a sexually confused corn plant. Um, normally, the male parts would grow up here, but as you can see, all the female parts are growing in the wrong place. I'd like to show you one of my mutants that I'm working with, and what's interesting about it is that the leaf thinks is a different part of the, of, the, of the plant, something that's completely, completely abnormal. So why are we so interested in mutants? Well, mutants help us figure out what the genes are actually doing in the corn plants. Mutants provide a way to help map and study the function of each gene needed to build the different parts of a corn plant. Our real goal at the end of the day is to know exactly what those genes are doing. Sarah and her colleagues know genomics can make better corn plants. Corn that can provide better nutrition, that needs less water and fertilizer, that can produce bio-based fuels and products, improving our lives and the environment but they're just getting started. 
The ultimate goal is to figure out what each and every one of those 50,000 corn genes does. And the tools to reach that goal are improving every day.